So what do we say at the beginning? Give me some justice. <laughs> and then, then Rob says, we should be asking for mercy. Oh, gosh. I've been getting some disturbing emails. I'm not going to go into the whole specifics of it, but uh, someone's upset. And there's always someone who's upset, right? Some, and sometimes it's me. Um, but, and the, the one of the, well, there's a basic reason why this particular person is upset, but one of their contentions was the problem with what we talk about here uh, at One Spirit is that um, everybody can't be saved. The idea of universal safety. You know, and when we talk about being saved and, and salvation, we're not quite talking about the same thing that maybe uh, others are talking about. But um, uh, so this this problem, this issue, and I just, the, the, um, the emails just kind of got me thinking about it. And uh, uh, I think what we know is that uh, it is so, for some reason, it is so attractive to look out into the world and see the bad behavior of others and, uh, and make those judgments. And it seems to be some kind of a comfort so that we can, uh, as bad as we feel about what we may have done or thought or did not done or whatever, that we can think, well, well at least I'm not as bad as that. At least I, don't do, I wouldn't do that thing. And, uh, and then when it's really outrageous, when we see some really outrageous thing, you know, that's like beyond, we get this idea that that's beyond any kind of redemption or forgiveness or, and that justice would demand some kind of very severe punishment for this. And uh, so it's easy to get worked up over all these ideas, and especially if we have a sense of persecution, if we believe that um, our lives are uh, in a bad state, and maybe not all the time, but from time to time, and we believe that it is the fault of others. We believe that it's because some other force has been active. And sometimes we look to those uh, people who we have relationships with in our life and we can blame them. They didn't do what we thought. Maybe we had a, maybe we had a bad breakup, you know, maybe we, we, We've uh, maybe we've uh, our relationship with someone has has uh, kind of seemed to have disintegrated. Perhaps we've had a financial setback, and we've got one person or another or a group of people or an institution that we blame uh, for these events. And if they wouldn't have done right, and and you can of course of course we know and we've talked about many times you can. You can get all the evidence you need for your own trial case uh, if you just turn on television or open up the newspaper. Uh, this morning I was looking at the newspaper, and of course it was the 50th uh, anniversary of the March on Washington. And uh, I remember when this happened. I was 11 years old. And uh, in our household, this was, uh, this civil rights movement was, was not welcomed, let's say. Let's just say that. Um, and there was, uh, uh, well, let's just say there was vigorous critique going on in the house over all of this. And, um, but what was being asked 50 years ago was for a justice that really equates to, well, is equality. And uh, this is a principle that cannot be taken, uh, even though some try to, uh, some have tried to restrict uh, certain rights and, and, uh, and status in society. The fact of the matter is, as in the meditation, that equality is, is just uh, a principle that is always present. So whatever you think, whatever your opinions are, and whatever kind of criteria you have in your mind about how this person doesn't measure up to whatever uh, strange standard we may have for the day, that it's, it's just, we're just fooling ourselves. 
because the fact of the matter is equality is just present. It is a, it, it's a principle that is just present. And in, in order to live a harmonious life, we need to get ourselves right with that in our own minds. That that's how it's going to happen. It's, you know, it's like we, we, we the, and again, this idea of unity, of oneness, this principle of unity just describes a state that exists, that we really are all connected. We are all connected in this, in, in if you think about, if you, hey, it's Sunday, if you think about it like this, we're all connected in the body of God. Uh, and the, the old uh, the old church would say it, the body of Christ. So we are we are all connected, and we are all equal parts of that body. And it is only when we get it in our minds that we are not a part of. And the same thing by extension is when that someone else is not a part of that we get ourselves in trouble, that we, that we find suffering. And uh, so, so this is, so this idea of justice that we've come to is really, the, the general uh, feeling about justice is kind of tied into revenge in, in, the, in our society, that justice somehow has to do with punishment. And uh, um, that's different than consequences. Although your punishment might, might be a consequence, uh, the, it, it, the, the principles are different. Consequences, just kind of natural consequences that occur as a result of actions, that's just that's how the world operates. And, and uh, you know, we would, we would see that that's appropriate, but to enforce revenge that feeds into the whole mindset of separation and one being better and 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 I and I, you know somebody's got to be the enforcer then and and uh, uh, someone you know you got to get it got to have a torturer yeah you know of some kind or you got to have an executioner you've got to have and uh, and so and now when I'm talking about this I'm not saying I'm not even suggesting that um, we should uh, just ignore th threats to the common welfare. However, I'm, I was just the other the, yesterday. I was listening to NPR, and there was a story on there about how jails all across the country are now charging uh, rent to all the inmates, it, it, and charging uh, all all these fees are being you know st stacked up against them. And you know this is politically popular to do something like this, but here's the problem. 98% uh, of the people in jail don't have any money to pay for this. And they're never going to, you know, and it's just, you know, it's just another burden. And what ends up happening is, depending on how vigorous the jurisdiction is about collecting the money, it just turns into more expense dragging these people back into court to try to get the money that they don't have. And there was a woman on, 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 the, on there that said, you know, we're not really locking these people up for their own good. The reason we lock people up is for our good. The reason that we're taking them, removing them from society is because we think that they are a danger. So it is a, it's a service that we're providing for the rest of society. We think it's a benefit to remove these people from the population for a certain period of time. So we should look at it that way. And that that's what we're paying for when we do this. Now, there's an open question as to whether or not we're locking up the right people. <laughs> but, but, I mean, if you look, if you really look at it, and it's appropriate to talk about this on this 50th anniversary, if you look at it, it's disproportionate. The African-American community is really, is, uh, is, there's way, way, way bigger percentage. Uh, and uh, and the, the, there's... <laughs> You know, you can you can argue, well, that's just because more of the people in the African-American community are committing crimes, uh, but it's not really the case. It's really not the case. There's a different standard. There's a different standard. It's a lot easier to get pulled over. It's a lot easier for all sorts of things to happen. A anyway, I'm not going to go down that road too much, I, but I do want to say that 
that um, this is not the kind of justice that I really wanted to talk about today, just to, but just to point out that, that justice that's about revenge is based in fear. Justice that's uh, that that uh, we this seeming justice that that um, we are that we are giving out to people in society is based on prejudice and hate many times, and and but divine justice, God's justice. You know, uh, there are a couple of passages in the Bible about um, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. And it's interesting; it's been mistranslated. But the original, the, it, it, it comes the the first the first uh, reference comes in uh, the Hebrew Bible in the Old Testament, and it's it, it actually the word was recompense is mine, not vengeance, and that has the whole whole different connotation and it has a connotation of repaying and and kind of like almost like it's almost like a fixing of the situation rather than some kind of punishment. And but we've in any case, however you take it, however you take it, whether you take it as God is saying, you know, don't worry about it, don't worry about taking vengeance uh, because I'm going to heal the whole business. You don't have to worry about it, right? Or you you take it that God's saying, I don't worry, I will punish him. Either way, we don't need to worry about it. That's really the point. Now, I believe it's about healing. But it, but it really doesn't matter because what we're being told is, don't take it. Don't take vengeance. And, and, and why? Not because then you're bad, but because it's not good for you. It's not good for you. It's not good for, for, your, it's not good for society to be thinking this way. So, uh, so this justice... I like to think about it as divine justice is grace. And grace is tied to this forgiveness. And grace has been, been uh, a lot of people think about grace as being a, um, an undeserved gift. Uh, that, you know, you're really not worth it, but because God's so cool, you're going to get some grace. But this is not it. Grace is unearned, not undeserved. Unearned meaning you don't have to earn it because it is a free gift of God to his children. Because you do deserve it. And this is a whole different way of looking at it. So God's grace heals injury. Now, one other thing I wanted to talk about concerning this crime and punishment thing is that we know where it's pretty clear that when we look at, um, you know, there's been a lot of focus on victims and victims' rights and stuff like this. And I do think that uh, victims of crime need to have some resources to be healed from the trauma. Uh, but to think about victims' rights as being some kind of program for victims to like uh, exact some kind of retribution from the perpetrators, this is not, it's not sound. I mean, it's not sound principle. And I believe, and I think it's psychologically true, that people don't ever have closure this way, that they end up in this whole mindset of, of uh, where they're just caught in this cycle of, of hate and uh, and because here's what we know, and in this, 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 the, the few studies that have been done have shown that those people who have been victims of crime, who are able to forgive the perpetrators, live a pretty happy, healthy life afterwards. And those that don't, it's pretty miserable. And so, really, here's what what justice is all about: is about forgiveness. It's about forgiveness. It's about forgetting. And the reason we forgive is not because the thing wasn't important. It's not because uh, it didn't matter. The reason that we forgive is because we want to heal. The reason that we forgive is because we want joy rather than this continual state of, 
of of upset and depression and and the, and the reason we we forgive is that we want to cleanse the past. So, and I'm thinking, and and, and I, that it's pretty clear that all of the seeming problems in the world could be forgiven and and thereby solved. And so and this would then be this would then be justice. And and so the forgiveness then would be to see things differently. And it all goes back to it all goes back to this the idea of oneness. That the only reason I'm upset with these other people that cause all these conflicts is because I think they're different from me. I think they're a threat to me. I think they're, and then you go, we say, well, you know, I mean, well, look at what they've done. But if we trace back, we find out that all these issues, all these conflicts, it's all this tit for tat thing going on. There was an offense. Then there was this, there was a, there was a, there was some kind of, uh, of answer to the offense. And then that was answered by another offense. And, it just keeps going back and forth, and we can't even really go back and figure out where the first offense occurred. So somewhere along the line, the way it, the way it stops, and this is what we talked about some time ago about the answer to the, to the problems in the Middle East, is when finally somebody says, I am not going to kill my brother, realizing that the person over there is, even if he kills my brother, I'm going to stop. Some, somewhere along the line, somebody's got to stop. And this way, we know that this principle works because we saw it happen in India with Gandhi. We said, no matter what, you can beat us, you can kill us. We are not going to beat you. We are not going to kill you. We're just going to keep marching up and down this street. We're just going to keep demonstrating. We're just going to keep doing it. And what happened? The world saw it. The rest of the world saw it, and they would not put up with the brutality anymore. Now they, they've lost their way again. But still, the principle worked. It absolutely worked. So to forgive and to forget and uh, to think about, well, here's this here, where, where we seem to be injured, we ap apply the balm of forgiveness. We cannot be harmed regardless that we think otherwise. And when I say we can't be harmed, this is, I'm always talking about in the reality of spirit, we cannot be harmed. It is only in this material world, in the physical world, where we can be harmed. And I believe a lot of times we set ourselves up for our own harm and then look to blame somebody else for it. A lot of times we put up with things just by being quiet about them that we really shouldn't be and we set up these conflicts in society. But we cannot, when, 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 we, when we seem to have lost something, we can acquire all good through forgiveness. I remember when I first got clean that uh, my sponsor had said, uh, some, somebody stole his bicycle. And he was really upset. Just, he didn't have a car at the time. Very upset, mad, went to a meeting, talked about somebody stole his bicycle, he's pissed off. And his sponsor at the time came to him and said, you got to pray for him. So what's that mean? You know, I mean, if you think about that, he says, what, you, you, you pray for him. You pray for, you pray for, the, uh, Stole my bicycle. Well, I'm going to pray for him for his well-being or for, for, he said, just pray for him. Just have a good thought for him. See, you know, just, just pray for his healing. Pray whatever. Just pray for good for him. And uh, it, sounded, it sounded nutty, but he did it. And something happened. I mean, as a result, the, the, the bike came back. But that wasn't really the result. Now, that sounds like, oh, man, you know, that's great. The bike came back. But that really wasn't the good thing. What happened was when he prayed for him, he stopped being mad. 
When he prayed for him, he stopped get, being upset about the situation. And so this is, um, so, so then this, when I started to get these, these disturbing emails, this is what I said. It, it, to, I'm talking to myself all the freaking time. And I, I just said, look, you've got to give this guy away. You have got to pray him to God. And, what, and that, 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 that process of saying, because what I was thinking was, I need to respond to this. I need to, you know, go through this whole crate. And when I, when, I, when I didn't even, I read it, I read the first one just kind of over the surface and got a little upset. But then when I looked at it closely, I saw that it was very disturbed and that there was so much suffering going on here on this, uh, on this person's part that all these thoughts that I had about, you know, trying to debunk what he was saying and give him a point by point, you know, counter reason for what that, he, that what he was saying was goofy. And so I just had this vision of me giving this person and all of, all of this, I didn't even realize that we had a conflict it, it before. Right. But I but obviously <laughs> I'm looking at it, but I didn't want to own it. I didn't want to own that conflict. So I give it away. I saw myself giving the person and the whole situation to God. Take this to spirit. Take this. We're, I know that an answer is coming and I'm just open. I'm just open now to what maybe I'm not supposed to. And, and th this is the thing. I know I don't have to do anything. I don't have to go over there. That, hey, I'm going over there. I'm going to knock on the door. Talk to me face to face. No, I'm not doing any of that. I don't have to do anything. I'll just wait. I'll.